upon the scene with a startling win streak to pose an unanticipated challenge in the East. Surprising story in San Francisco, where a stunning comeback on a baffling pitching staff has hitters in shock. And we've got revelations for one and all on This Week in Baseball. American League Review. In Seattle, the Angels wear a halo. After losing seven of eight on the road, Seattle came home in need of a lift, but California was too much to bear. Archangel Bobby Gritch was devilish to the Mariners in game one, raising his heavenly batting average above 400 and blasting a game-winning homer. Mike Witt also made sure Mariner prayers went unanswered, tossing a three-hit shutout to collect his first win of 85. California congratulations were in order for the next two games, as the Angels racked up 17 runs and won them both to take over first place in the West. Looking especially sharp was Brian Downing, who sank the Mariners with five RBIs and six hits, including a home run. Another Angel who posted some lofty numbers was Gary Pettis, the speedy center fielder wrapped out five hits and scored five runs. The pesky Pettis also swiped home on a double steal to raise his streak to nine straight steals. And shortstop Dick Schofield remained hot with a six-game hitting streak, another reason for California's 300-plus team batting average over 12 games. In game four, the Angels stayed on high with pitching as Tommy John won his first game since last August and dealt the Mariners loss number eight in a row. Donnie Moore was equally tough in relief, earning save number three as California came on strong to win 11 out of 14 overall. So look out for the Angels. Next stop, Minnesota, where the Twins shifted into overdrive. It's been a seesaw ride for the Twins, who lost nine straight games, but then began to sail, and they stayed aloft when Oakland came to town. Center fielder Kirby Puckett has been on a tear, and he ripped up the A's with five RBIs in the four-game series. Rookie shortstop Greg Gagne added to Minnesota's run count with four RBIs on four hits, including three doubles, lifting his batting average above 320. Also sounding off with a strong return to form was Kent Herbeck, who broke out of an early April slump with an eight-game hitting streak. Herbeck had three RBIs against Oakland as the Twins scored 31 runs in the four games. Tom Brunanski applied his share of power with two home runs, one in the bottom of the ninth. Long drive, left field, down the line. Collins in the corner. It's gone! A game-winning blast for Bruno. In the last two games, the spotlight belonged to Mickey Hatcher, who went five for five one day and four for five the next. Hatcher tied a league record with nine straight base hits in back-to-back nine-inning games, and he raised his average 80 points to near 330. Manager Billy Gardner also liked the looks of pitcher Mike Smithson, who went all the way in the finale for win number three as the Twins swept the series and went on to increase their winning streak to 10 games. On to Chicago, where the White Sox cleaned up on the Yankees. At Comiskey Park, the White Sox climbed above 500 with a three-game wipeout of slumping New York. In the opener, Tom Seaver wasn't quite terrific, but he was good enough to chalk up career win number 290. He had plenty of help from teammate Harold Baines, who came up in the sixth with the Sox down one nothing, and there goes a three-run homer for Baines, and that smash put the Sox ahead to stay. In game 
two. Chicago fans could barely watch as the Sox again trailed early, but nifty defense kept them close. How about this for defense with a capital D, as in double play? From glove hand to bare hand. But the Sox still trailed three to one in the bottom of the ninth when Scott Fletcher came up with two out and two on. Great Scott, Fletcher pulled the Sox within one, and then here came that man Harold Baines again. An RBI double tied the score and sent the game into extra innings. The Yankees untied it in the 11th, but the Sox came right back in the bottom of the inning to tie it again. Carlton Fisk came up with a tantalizing offer. Bases loaded and a drawn-in infield. And that's all it took as New York went down to a second straight Sox uprising. In the finale, Chicago was again looking for a comeback. Down three to one, former Yankee Oscar Gamble came up in the seventh. Going, going, that ball is gone. A two-run homer to tie the game. In the bottom of the ninth, any signs of a Yankee revival vanished when Ozzie Gijan walked with the bases loaded. And for the third straight time, Chicago came from behind to beat New York. Now, let's open the notebook for this week in baseball's TWIB notes from around the American League. Yankee owner George Steinbrenner made his 12th managerial change in as many years when he fired Yogi Berra 16 games into the season. The Yankees were in last place at the time with a 6-10 and 10 record. The move made bigger headlines because Billy Martin was recalled to manage the team for the fourth time. It's also his eighth term as a big league skipper, having held the job in Minnesota, Detroit, Texas, and Oakland. Texas Ranger Buddy Bell reached a milestone when he connected for career hit number 2,000. Texas lost the game to Toronto, but the Rangers are mighty glad this bell tolls for them. Milwaukee's Pete Bukovic is on the comeback trail after a torn rotator cuff forced him to miss all of 84 and most of 83. The Brew Crew's former ace beat the White Sox for his first win since 82. The same year he won 18 games and the Cy Young Award. When Brewer Ted Simmons hit a grand slam homer in the bottom of the ninth, he not only beat Detroit but also knocked the Tigers out of first place after 198 consecutive days on top. They went into first place opening day last season, never looked back. The third team in big league history to stay in first from opening day to season's end. Wow, new cherry.